Hello and welcome to the Bubbling Bog Brewery, which is supposed to be a replacement level for Benjo Kazooie's fourth level, the Bubble Gloop Swamp. I'm Angelo Nowens and I'll guide you through this level today. So, uh, before we begin, I'd like to indicate that this level is based around its major centerpiece, mainly the cauldron, which is Gruntilda's cauldron. Uh, it was supposed to be where she would uh, brew her magic potions and whatnot. Um, as you can see, the cauldron is in the center of the level, in its main open space, uh, and it's surrounded with uh, all kinds of niches here, and here, here, for example, which is in accordance with uh, Alexander, uh, sorry, Christopher Alexander's book, A Pattern Language, uh, Pattern 114, The Hierarchy of Open Space, where he describes that if you have larger, larger spaces, Basically, you'd attach smaller niches to it so that uh, you could have these uh, smaller pockets of activity, which encourages people to look forward into the open spaces and, you know, um, to guide their attention towards these open spaces. So what I've tried to do here is I've tried to uh, guide the player towards uh, always navigating towards the cauldron, which is also the, the main point of navigation in the level. Let's see, at the beginning of the level, we start here at this uh, little pedestal. Uh, Benjo will start viewing the cauldron from here. This is basically the view from the player. And uh, as you see, we can see far into the distance, but the main point of focus is the cauldron here. So when we start walking, um, uh, we can immediately see that there's this like green acid colored uh, poison basically and if the player walks into it they'll know that uh, that their health will go down uh, we'll jump across these wooden uh, planks to save ourselves from getting hit and these like little circles on the surface of this acid uh, they're meant to be because it's a bubbling bog I'm uh, what I'm trying to represent here is that these areas here are uh, like the bubbles that bubble up and they would release like toxic gases meaning that if for example Benjo jumps over this little area here to get to this plank and he times it wrong where the gas es escapes uh, Benjo and uh, Kazooie will kind of suffocate and they will drop into the acid meaning that they will lose some HP and need to get back on either one so uh, basically that teaches the player that they need to time their jumps well because the, the gases will release according to a certain time schedule. Not all the same time, but everyone will have their own timer basically. So um, from this point of the level, let's check it out. Uh, in accordance with the pattern language also, we're assuming that the player is kind of hugging the walls because the player doesn't like to be in an open space. So they'll probably go to the left here first encounter their first enemy and uh, walk up to this giant treehouse. As they arrive in this treehouse uh, they can also walk up here to meet these nice people here. These people are called the tree huggers. This is King Treehugger. The tree huggers explain to Benjo how Gruntilda came to their forest and spoiled the environment with her kettle of poison. Uh, they also explain how she constantly pumps up water from the lake in order to let the cauldron spill over constantly and let the poison spread out over their forest. There's a lot of other things to be done here as well, which I'll talk about later, but let's continue the bird's eye view over the level first. So, this is the cauldron and the water that's being pumped in it. I'll uh, continue on that later, but let's first have a look at this lake area right here. Um, if the player reaches this place, they can immediately see that it's fenced off, it's off limits, there's two guards patrolling it, but there's also points of interest, so the player knows that they need to get there somehow. The player's attention will also be drawn towards this mole hole here, uh, which teaches the player the only ability in the level, which is the gas mask ability, and it teaches the player to jump through the gases that I described earlier as if they weren't there. Once learned, the ability continues out throughout the entire level, and that's very useful. Uh, continuing onward with the cauldron, this is the, the water pump that pumps up the water into the cauldron, which makes it spill over and, uh, you know, contaminate the entire level. Benjo can actually go into this uh, water pump and discover a hidden tunnel. 
this tunnel will then take them to a new area with uh, also new enemies, uh, which is the shark on a chain. The shark on a chain will automatically try and bite uh, Benjo when he's within range. Uh, continuing onward, we enter this new uh, pool area, and if we try and reach to the surface, we will see that Benjo is actually in the area that was off limits before. So we've discovered a hidden link. However, the player still has no access to these points of interest, which means they'll have to dive in again in search for another entrance, which is here, guarded, uh, guarded by this big bully over here. in order to get to these secret uh, cave areas. The player can then get up to the front of this waterfall and reap its rewards. From here the other platforms are also... And jumping on top of this pressure pad here will shut down the uh, water pump to Gruntilda's cauldron over here, which means that uh, there will no, uh, be no more leaking of poison into the entire level, but the level itself will still remain the same for gameplay uh, sake. Um, in order to reach this little place over here, you need to jump over these platforms and navigate your way across here and then there. And uh, this will lead you to Gruntilda's little bookshelf, where she keeps her secret formulas. And the final point of interest would be the 3D maze over here. Uh, it's a bit of a complex shape, but I'll uh, talk about more about it later uh, when we discuss each part of the level piece by piece. So that was our quick level overview. Now let's continue uh, about the jigsaw pieces. The first jigsaw piece I'd like to discuss is the one you can get if you walk into King Treehugger's treehouse. Uh, he will send guards from all directions to kill you because he thinks you're an intruder. Uh, and when you defeat them, he will uh, beg for his life and offer you gold, which is the first uh, jigsaw piece. Uh, afterwards, when he finds out you're actually a good guy, uh, he'll ask you to solve this puzzle and also to uh, get rid of Gruntilda's cauldron. The puzzle works in a way where if you jump on top of this tile, it will move to the empty slot and then for example this tile will be empty again. Uh, the slide puzzle when finished uh, King uh, Treehugger will then un uh, unveil the, the final piece which will be laid into the puzzle and behind it there will be another jigsaw piece for you. So that's two. The third jigsaw piece uh, is uh, the 3D maze which is actually a race field. This is uh, also one of the tree huggers, but more of like a racy kind of tree hugger. And the race takes you uh, across the, the kettle to the mushroom over here and back towards the beginning of the race. The player can choose their own way back as long as they pass this point over here. Um, getting in. Uh, finishing before your opponent will result in a jigsaw piece appearing over here, which is the third one. Continue on with the fourth. Um, if the player activates this pressure pad over here, um, a timer will start and they will be challenged to navigate, navigate across the kettle and towards this uh, little patch over here, which will have a jigsaw piece. The fifth jigsaw piece uh, can be obtained by smashing all the mushrooms, which are in total 10. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10, which is the biggest one. This is also the one which will uh, uh, have the jigsaw appearing after all 10 mushrooms have been stamped in the order that the game suggests. The sixth jigsaw piece can be obtained by simply jumping over here. The difficulty in this is that 
from this patch you can actually see this little platform over here so players will automatically assume that they need to jump over here which they do need to do but uh, reaching this place here will reward them with another jigsaw piece and they can then safely return back here the seventh jigsaw piece is the one over here on top of the bookshelf in order to reach it players need to jump over here on the bookshelf and actually attack the book over here which will be standing up straight like these ones uh, hitting it where the X is marked will tip it aside like it is in this picture and will enable Benjo to climb on top of it and jump through this hole to reach the jigsaw piece the eighth jigsaw piece is right over here in the waterfall which uh, I showed you how to reach earlier and finally the ninth piece is rewarded to you for um, shutting down the, the water pump by a king tree hugger yay thank you so with the jigsaw pieces out of the way let's look for Jinjo's the yellow one is over here in the corner where it's uh, out of sight of people who kind of rush into the treehouse the second one is hidden in the um, handle of the cauldron the third the green jinjo is on like a very uh, difficult to reach and see place of the 3d maze the fourth jinjo is again kind of hidden from sight in a far corner the orange one and finally the pink Jinjo is hiding over here as you can see all of the Jinjos are hidden in an attempt to encourage the players to navigate and explore the level more thoroughly moving on to the final bit of this uh, level overview uh, the next couple of valuable pickups in the level so over here behind the gate you can see an additional life pickup in order to get this life a player must uh, jump on top of this platform actually jump on top of the wall and walk over here in order to reach it uh, the next valuable pickup would be the life honeycomb over here that's hidden behind the waterfall uh, it is actually reachable only from this platform if you jump and then fly backwards the next honeycomb is over here right above King Tree Hugger's chair if you stand on top of this chair and you jump as high as Benju Kazooie can do with the Kazooie jump uh, you can just reach it which is also tested on the Benju Kazooie backpack editor as for other honeycombs, uh, we can get more in this lonely patch of dirt over here. And we have another one over here. These are put here to help the player uh, retrieve some life if they uh, found the level a bit too hard to navigate. The last uh, item of interest would be Gruntilda's lair switch over here. Uh, and players can actually reach it by jumping out from here and flying back in order to reach this little switch over here and press it so that something happens in Gruntilda's lair in order to get an additional jigsaw piece. So that was uh, the quick overview of the level, the Bubbling Bog Brewery. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was a clear presentation of the level. Closing off this presentation I'd like to mention uh, a couple of things that I did not use in the level. Uh, for example, I haven't used any Mumbo Skulls. The reason for this is that the original level, the Bubble Gloop Swamp, uh, had 10 of those, but they also used 10 to uh, perform the transformation. I don't have a transformation in this level, so therefore I don't need any skulls, and putting some of them in would actually affect the further levels, which I don't want to do. Um, other than that, I don't have any eggs or feathers in this level because you, uh, I just think that they're um, uh, distracting from everything else in the level. I think it's quite a busy level and I'm trying to direct uh, the player towards points of interest with uh, jigsaw notes and other uh, pieces of interest. And I think I have plenty of those in the level already. Uh, I think the focus of this level is more on uh, learning how to navigate with Banjo-Kazooie well 
as opposed to learning a lot of new abilities and trying to master those. I hope this also explains a lot of the key decisions behind my uh, level design for this level and I hope that uh, it helps you understand why I made those uh, choices. So uh, that was it. I thank you for listening and I hope that you've enjoyed the level as much as I have.